the 200, Pride of Jenny, three lengths Buffalo River, now Mr. Brightside and Cascadian coming, but it's still Pride of Jenny, 100 to go, there's no stopping her, what a performance, Pride of Jenny wins. Welcome to Bet Doctor Behind the Curtain, look at how pro punters operate, I'm your host Scoot, I'm in studio with Johnny Walter, how are you brother, we're back, everything going well? No. Is it? Yep. Everything's going well? You going tell really me. Well. Beautiful up here. You tell me. You've already That's... abused me. Said so my st- fashion sense is no good. I'm already hurt. Yeah, he's got a uh, looks like board shorts, and they got a, he's got a million dogs all over him. So we might spare you of that until later in the show, so you can uh, warm into it. But uh, boys down in Melbourne, you're both in studio. How are you, DK? You looks like you got the uh, the fast racing uh, trim there. Nice haircut, looking good. Yeah, yes, got the trim, Scooty. But um, geez, I felt it last night, Nico. I don't know about you, but uh, got down about ten degrees last night. Both got the hoodies on here. It was um, First night for the year, the bloody heaters went on, 20th of, 20th of March, if you can believe it. But, uh, no, the sound of the, uh, what's in the background here, the, the Formula One cars for Grand Prix going, plenty of action around here, South Melbourne. So what about you, Nico? Yeah, it was cold yesterday at Sandown by, by the last race, that was for sure. <laughs> so, um, yeah, definitely feeling that. But, uh, yeah, big weekend of Formula One and huge weekend for Melbourne, William Reed Stakes Day at Mooney Valley. So um no, keen to get out there. It should be a good weekend of uh sport and obviously the slipper probably plays the main event this weekend and what looks a great undercard as well for Rose Hill. So um not like we're used to in the last few weeks in Victoria with seven and eight horse fields for most of the program last week except for the All Star Mile. But um yeah Sydney definitely plays the uh plays number one this week. And the valley be number one for you looking at the horses too that that sort of ring out the back there, isn't it? It's close as you can get, isn't it, out there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a it's a great mounting yard. Um, maybe some others could could look at that <laughs> one and probably um sort of uh you know take some advice from their their setup there. So hopefully they keep it sort of similar when they rebuild theirs. But mm. no, nah, it's it's probably my favourite truck to look at them in the yard. But it is. Yeah, saying just quickly on the uh, the All Star Mile, it was interesting. I spoke to a couple of bookies sort of offline, and it looks like the Coolmore Classic outperformed it. And no surprise, given I guess the size of the fields, and uh, RV sort of left scratching their heads. So that's interesting. And they had all those small fields early in the card too, so failed to sort of launch there at Caulfield. And I was just a little bit surprised. Usually very outward, uh, Josh Blanksby, friend of the show. Uh, usually he tweets the turnover figures quite promptly. And uh, they've just sort of been MIA. So interesting they've chosen not to publish them, but it looks like a bit of a bloodbath at all some old day. And there's still nothing being tweeted from his account, I think, from the inner Heath track. So fair enough. I understand they haven't really got uh, much to go off for the in, the inner track and you've got to give them a bit of a spell there. But... um. I think that could be Sayonara for the uh, the All Star Mile. I think it could be dead and buried. And he normally if, only if sends out the the bollocks sports bet numbers anyway. He doesn't send the real ones out. So uh, if if the sports bet coloured in ones are, are no good, that's not a great sign. Um, mm. um, 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 a multi a multi figures inc- obviously they're probably not included in those numbers, are they? I mean, how much money would have been invested through multi through Mister Brightside during the day? But then where's that money go? Is it allocated if they take a sport better or someone up with the good thing up in Sydney? Where's that turnover? Where's that charted? That's one thing. But it surprises me. Normally, races with short price favourites like that, biggest race of the day, up the favourite holds a fortune. So, surprising that. And especially the Coolmore was a horrible race, horrible betting race. I, it doesn't actually sound right to me. To be fair, I agree with DK. It sounds insane that that uh, the All Star Mile didn't hold more money in the Coolmore. But anyway, here's what it is. It's very strange, and uh, it's very strange what's happening up in uh, Sydney at the moment. Uh, pss- Trying to do the replays and trying to have a look at and look at the form and the way the tracks are playing, it's uh, it's crazy at the moment. It looked really laney last week and last few last probably month maybe in in Sydney. It's full of lanes and some form just looks like a bit of a mess. Indecision, I think, is like a huge factor to that, isn't it? Like you said, you come out race one, everyone thinks, oh, what's going on? No rain all week, putting up a six or whatever. Is the fence off? So they're all scared to go there. Then after one race, they're not sure. So then, you, then they're scared to go wide. Then they're scared to go here. <laughs> so, so you know they're all handcuffed as well. So you know you get up getting these crazy slow speeds. Then all of a sudden, one gets up the fence. The next race, they go 100 mile an hour. And oh, it's just. I think it's all due to indecision and no one really knowing what's going on. I'm going to borrow your tin foil hat because you seem to be wearing it a lot in terms of the barrier draws and stuff like that. But I'm going to put my little conspiracy hat on, and I think it could be just like a little bit of a a bit of a war between the inform and undefeatable gay bot yard who like hard, fast, good tracks versus the other superpower up there, Team Waller, who like give New Zealand horses sort of slow, you know, slow to get away, 
save up for a one big swooping run and light the sting out of the track. So is it just a big big stable war on how the tracks are prepared? Oh, that's or, or what Reggie that just... looked like he balled over, didn't he? And he's yeah. obviously team gay, but... Uh, the funny part is, like you're saying, with, the, with this indecision, sometimes they end up giving more control to, to Gay's horses and makes them absolutely unbeatable than when it's a hard, fast deck and everyone kind of knows what the play is going to be so the, the pressure goes on. But, um, yeah, it can be counterproductive. But, yeah, you sort of – if you put the super tin foil hat on and you have the track conditions with the barrier draws, then you get Zugotcha. So, you know, you got to – it depends how far your tin hat wants to go with your uh, – <laughs> With your conspiracy theories, ah, oh, you know it is what it is. But it's um, yeah, oh, just everyone just wants to know how much water have you put on the track, how much rain's there been, how's it going to play, what's the penetrometer? That's it. We don't care what it actually is. We we, we just want to know what it is. <laughs> we just want to know the truth so we can bet. Hard enough to in the form, and it's surprising that the breeders aren't sort of kicking up because they want to find out who the best, the better breed is and the best horse is. So surely they'd want the track to race fairer and faster. I don't think they really care about that either. They just want a a name that they can hammer and sell for four times what it's worth. So I think it's all, I don't think anyone really cares about anything, but probably punters the most need a little bit of accurate information. So we've got some hope of making an educated decision. Another one talking about uh, four times the money or maybe something in reverse. The other interesting one, Goulburn at the moment, is facing a um, – oh, it's, it's a real quirky one. They're in a they're in a bind. The banks won't give them more money to upgrade their track. They're sitting on what they believe is a $30 million uh, facility or, or block of land, and New South Wales, Racing New South Wales, only want to give them $9.5 million to upgrade the, the facility and the stables, but they have to hand over the freehold of the track. Something is a bit – Smells, smells yeah, it just wrong smells, there, doesn't, doesn't it? it? It's, it's, it's obviously extremely hard for some some people like us to try and make it a, a, an informed decision on it. We only hear sort of we've got information what we read. You never really hear a lot again from the powers that be on on these sorts of things, and it's sort of left for everyone to speculate. Uh, it sort of reminds you a little bit of that. That um, who, who was the thing? There was a story came out the other day, and it was there was about twenty seven different versions of the boat from the tab about what he said and who he said it to, and. And that's what it feels like when any of these situations come up. You hear so many different stories and what's the truth, but it does feel like um, racing New South Wales are, are tightening the screws state, statewide to get like full control of of the tracks. And um, you know, I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. But without knowing what their actual plan is, mm. you know, it might be good for racing. I don't know. They could sell it anyway later on, like they're going to do with Rose Hill. And yeah. it's good to see Tom Mania um, speak out last week. Or, or he obviously pumps the race up because he's got the two favourites. He's got uh, Storm Boy, which they sold for four sixty, and now they've bought back for five, uh, for fifty million. Or and that's a bit of a head scratch in itself. And he's got Switzerland, but he's saying that this is the pinnacle of Australian racing. So it's great to see that uh, Rose Hill still exists. And I was sort of looking for our sports show as well. That corridor is amazing. So you've got Homebush, you've got Parramatta Stadium for the NRL, and then Rose Hill's in the middle. So you, there's a five-kilometre stretch, and that's where S- Sydney sporting uh, facilities all are. So it's further proof that it's pure you can't insanity. Replace it. You can't replace to move, to remove that because people are conditioned to already go into that area and like GWS it's a hundred times worse than Harold Park, hundred times worse. Like Harold Park was a, a great facility. Obviously, I used to go there as much as anyone, and it was like probably the hub of the Sydney trotting community. But you times that by a thousand, really, when it comes to racing, because people don't go to Menangle, they're not going to go to Timbuktu. So, like you say, it's just natural that it's part of the community there and. You remove it, you, you basically remove the sport from the community. Mm, and that's the other thing with Goulburn too. What do Goulburn do? So if Goulburn don't bow down to racing New South Wales, what are they going to do? Sell it, keep the money and bust them to Canberra and into Sydney until the money runs out? Are they going to give trainers that sort of were there? There's, there's, they're sort of stuck. So that, it's going to be interesting to see what sort of compromise they come with. Throw to, the tin sort of go back forward. on, right? Uh, that track's been doing some ridiculous things the last you know, three, four months where mm. they've had no rain and it's a race to the outside fence. So, you know, are they getting funding now appropriate to keep up the upkeep of the track? Are they already in trouble to a point where they have to sign? You know, it's all, again, speculation because no one no actually one comes out and tells you anything, but it doesn't look great. No. Interesting. Anyway, some uh, plenty of water to go under the bridge there and uh, hopefully we get some answers with all that sort of interesting stuff that uh, affects us somewhat over the next uh, couple of weeks. But today's show is going to be a beauty. Looking forward to trying to find you guys a winner 
Poor old Donny. Uh, I don't think he'll be sending uh, D. Thornton a Christmas card just yet. Deferential again. Jump with him. Snagged out to the back and gets beaten under a length. So uh, just nightmare fuel again up in Queensland. But uh, that's sort of what you get sometimes. Uh, Linderman was good. Fly Fly set a task. I thought she was uh, full of merit. Just kept sort of running on when not many horses uh, could do that, especially early in the day. Territory Express, that sort of psych ward material, 26 into $19. Well, yeah, caught the bump and then... We were a victim of the old uh, post-race 17 different race angles that are all completely misleading there where it looked like he sort of may have got it on the line, then one angle showed he may have got it, then the the ultimate photo came up, my head blew off. But um, he actually rode it pretty well, Zach. He was just a little bit stiff that he couldn't slice through when he needed to. Probably should have won. Mm, yeah, it was a, uh, a big run and... Uh now that the horse is pretty exposed, so that was the big opportunity to get the big price. And he's a 92 rater now, when he was a 72 rater going into that, and he'll probably start single figures every time he goes around. Bit sick, uh, Nico. You were all over Mr. B last uh start, you got willowed. I guess that's been done to death, so we uh, we might give that a bit of a spell. And um, yeah, I think most of us agree. Maybe DK, yeah, uh, DK no, did I, say, I honestly thought he. It gave it a chance. You know, I had it mapped there, and I thought he should be good enough to win, and he wasn't. That's how I mm. read the race. Yeah, yeah. when it went good, didn't it? Yeah, it good like also winner. Freakish for effort from the yeah. winner. I think yeah. Matt Hill, that Hill's call. He did. He probably exacerbated or put a little bit he of fuel in the fo- Yeah, he doubled the distance. He said it was fifteen lengths off him. Yeah, <laughs> it was probably se- seven behind him. So yeah, well, the bloke was eight and a half. It was eight and a half when he said fifteen? Some bloke <laughs> measured it. Bit of mayo. Yards. He went with the yards. Yeah. Yeah. Just using the wrong measurement. Yeah. Mooney Valley on Saturday, as we said, so it's going to be a day meeting, so that's uh, handy. Uh, I'm going to have a look at Eagle Farm again. So Transatlantic was a beauty. Speaking of uh, Queensland, instead of going right back, boom, go straight to the front, Angela Jones. So uh, that's how tricky. Weren't you happy with yourself after 100 metres there? My God. Yeah, I was. I, I had the, the the wet towel. Yeah, and, yeah, I was in a pretty good space. Uh, that said, I definitely needed it. So, <laughs> save the day again, uh, Uncle Tony. And uh, they did say on the video uh, that they're going to go forward. So it's worth checking out uh, the Golan video. Sometimes it uh, can help you try and piece the puzzle together. Top Sport steamers were good. Uh, Lindemann and uh, Democracy Manifest uh, were the two winners there. So a bit of a sick one for you there, Walty. And Top Sport have got the protest payout. So you're seeing uh, a fair few of the best, the best bets come through in those uh, these early steamers. So people are happy just to get set to win up to five thousand uh, fixed price at the time. So if it blows, you're on for on to win more so good little opportunity there if you want to get set with uh, top sport uh, because you've got horses that uh, you don't have to fish out the price as much so horses like storm boy if you can't be bothered sort of sitting around waiting it's a, uh, a great product best of the best so uh, use it while we've still got it nico let's have a look at uh, the valley on saturday and race two is the first one we're going to have a look at you've uh gee you've picked an absolute corker here really tough race i thought and the favourite is Spywire, two dollar eighty favourite. John Allen, Growing Empire, three eighty. Sassy Jenny, four dollars. Dancing Storm, seven. Harper Lee, ten dollars. Bitter Creek, eleven. And a uh, couple of blowouts at seventy one dollars. Spywire, mm. he's still running it. Still going around. Oh my god! So let's have a quick look at a replay. And you're going for the uh, the Adelaide form here, Dancing Storm, Nico. Yeah, I really like this win. He's the the horse in the blue blinkers here just looming up to the lead. This was over 1,100 metres. He probably didn't really have a a real killer turn of foot in this race. Hits the front a long way out, but just like the way he builds through his momentum late, um, he's the second fastest last 200 of the day off quite a fast tempo. Uh, The horse that runs into fourth ran okay um, on debut at Soundown, and the format of that race through Yes Lulu looked okay last week behind Bold Bastille. So I think the form lines are there good enough. Um, That race rated pretty pretty well on punting form. Uh, it was one of the quicker run races of the day, and as I said, he come home quite strong. So a bit of an old DK pill, that one, uh, out fast, home fast. So just thought there was a lot of ticks with this horse out to 1,200 metres. The market's always had a big opinion of him. Um, he started short prices uh, early in his career, bumped into Wolfgang in one of those runs. And I think since the blinkers went on, he's just um, he's found a bit this horse. And in a race where, you know, Spywire's going around off two grand finals, um, he'll be up there on the speed. He's had a jump out since his last run. Just don't know how much he has left to give. Growing Empire was good on debut at Kensington, but did run through the outside rail <laughs> after they went through the line and has had two trials since. So um, it'll be interesting to see how he handles the the occasion there because you wouldn't have thought that's the greatest experience for a horse on debut, but it might not matter. Uh, Blinkers on first time, 
definitely brings some intrigue there. Sassy Jenny was an okay winner at Mooney Valley, but the the clock didn't really back her up too much. So I thought in a race where, you know, the first few in front of him definitely have their knocks, this just looks like a horse is going to come over here, prime for this race, 1,200 metres, big tick. Mick D aboard, he's one of the real go-to riders on the day. A lot of the real A-grade jockeys uh, are up in Sydney, and he's probably one of the only A-graders that has stayed in Melbourne. So just stalk the speed here um, and like the way he really got to the line last start. So I thought around seven or eight dollars he he looked a pretty easy bet for mine in a race where there's a, a few chinky horses in front of him. I don't know if you had a look here, DK. Yeah, I had a look when Nico over look at the ones you were yeah, no, I agree. I um I sort of looked at him and oh, what do you hand here, Nico? But um one, there's gonna be half a carve up up the front here. I mean that Sassy Jenny goes pretty keen. Spywall is gonna be right there and those trials of um Growing Empire. What about the muck leather it was in at Hawkesbury? Like complete muck leather. I know it trucked along good in the blinkers, but well, it must be. It's, I, I assume it's a bit of a nutcase the way it ran out of the ran out on the winning post there, and it's been back to the trials, and the way it sweats up a tree at the trials. So it's got to be some query on how it behaves itself. And you picked the one that's going to be just camp behind them, coming coming over the top of them. So um, yeah, I thought there was enough um, queries on those top three to have a ping at something around Nico for sure. And I just won a little one there. I, I know it. I know it was only a bit of a trot and can at home, but um, just one at odds. I'm, he might come back a real good horse. Is Harper Lee? Um, I'd look liked to have drawn better, but it's going to be. I assume he's back looking for cover. It was held up to the from the four hundred to the, about the hundred and fifty at at uh, Ballarat, and just went whooshka, like and put a space on it. And the thing that chased it, the good old thing in the blinkers. Snack bar. Whoa. So um, horse to follow. I'm not sure it's got to measure up here, but. Um, it might come back a good horse. So um, yeah, at, at double figure odds, another one that might be camped off this this tempo and coming strong late. So. Yeah, had some big closing splits on punting form. Uh, come home nearly six and a half lengths above her last um, six hundred for the meeting, and quite fast relative to the day. So thousand meter race, obviously, yeah, but, but it was held up for three quarters of that yeah, last six hundred. So a, it was a nice win. But that snack bar, well, I went and had a good look at it, and the, I think it might have been the blinkers or something turned in on, but. Whew. Yeah, so uh, they're the one. Yeah, no, no, Nico's. Uh, yep, enough holes in the in the ones short in the market there, Scoot. Mm, I'd be interested to see the market moves with uh, Harper Lee. If that was just a barrier trial uh, out at Ballarat that day, I'd sort of maybe f fall into that horse. I did notice that it was uh, well in the market in the Ottawa Stakes against horses like an Ezer and Arabian Summer at Flemington uh, back in the uh, spring carnival. So yeah, yeah, Harper Lee was a bit of a watch for me, but I wanted to see what the market was going to do with it. But um, It just punched the breeze there, just faced the breeze down the straight. It was just like a, yeah, just a complete forget. I think the, the real horse is what it did the other day, but it probably mm. might be better with some cover. But, um, yeah, yep. Could definitely uh, play around the market two and seven. And, uh, well, what about this um, growing empire, this nutcase up from Sydney? Man, I'm just glad to see that Kieran Maher's got a two-year-old in somewhere in Australia oh. because uh, you know, he didn't quite sneak one into the slipper with his 733 yearling, so it's good to see him have a runner. But, uh, you know, I don't think that form looks <laughs> anything special. I, I like the angle. I do think uh, if they've found the right play, the boys, and Spywire was just the ultimate lawnmower run last start, even though it was... Still good. It was gone before the bend. So um, if he wins, too good. He's an all right trainer, Kieran Ma. He trained the All Star Mile winner. Yeah. Good. That that horse, if anyone ever wants to look at a horse that's insane and defeats all things that horses should do, go and look at Pride of Jenny. It should be dead <laughs> 73 times over. It is it's, it's the best, ancient. biggest iron horse I've ever seen. Group uh, one action is race eight, and uh, that's the William Reed uh, market only. So we'll just go through the top couple in the market. Imperatrice at dollar seventy five, cylinder five dollars, barrier one looks a bit sticky. Bella Nipatina seven fifty. I am me. He's been the mover thirteen into eight. King's Gambit's lost a leg. Don't know which way he's going to go. Eleven out to twenty dollars, and then you got Cumin twenty one, and I won't bother about the rest. Free bet time. Hypothetically speaking, if you had a free bet, who would you be backing around the room? Nico first. Uh, I am me. I thought she sets up perfect here. Like the the trials leading in, quiet trial, then a real good hit out last uh, trial up in Sydney comes down there from there. I, I think they really made a horse of her last campaign. They toughened her up in a few fast run races. Um, she was quite good relative to Imperatriz when they met in the Manicado, it might have been. Um, she said a last on that occasion. I think she'll be a lot closer to the speed here, and I think Imperatures will be giving her a head start. So I thought that the, the early market was right, assessing her way over the odds at 13s. I think around that $7, $8 mark looks looks good enough for me for a horse that's going to get everything in her favour. 
Just stole my stole my thunder there, Nico. I was uh, I landed on it as well. I uh, I gave it a real good hope in the Rupert Clark, and it was a terrific run on pace. Like Magic Time was enormous to win it, but and it was, and first time fourteen hundred. Yeah, she looked that's like right. That was a massive group. It stuck that. it out really well after after riding the speed um, in that Manicato. That just if you look at the overhead, she just began a bit grubby and ended up probably a pair too far back from Imperatrice and what we would have thought out the back. Um, steamed home, like coming around them. So now it's going to hug the rail inside, save the ground, uh, positive map. Yeah, I thought uh, it could get a lot closer to Imperatrice for sure if, um, and, and possibly trouble it. Yeah. Jade Ups? I agree, three for three. And the draw is the thing that's most important for this horse. I love this horse, especially when it draws low because it can just not expend energy and and has a great turn of foot. Imperatrice is interesting and probably does get a bit of help coming across, um, but it's still going to have to work in the run and this horse is not going to have to work in the run. So, But if Cylinder does what it does last did last start where it improved 33 length, <laughs> what do you do with it? But yeah, I am me each way. Beautiful. Mm. I'd probably uh, probably free bet. I'd back Bellanie Patino. I think she loves the valley, but the, I lose my chubby with uh, Jay Allen on. I thought uh, Craig Williams is the right jockey for her, but uh, he bobs up when he's least expected, old John Allen. So he is, there's definitely two of him, but uh, free bet, I'd probably back uh, Bill and Ipatina. So interesting. We're uh, siding with the Mar team to uh, upset the apple cart and, and steering away from the favourites there. Race 10 at Mooney Valley is the benchmark 84 over 1,200 metres. Grand Impact's the favourite 350. Extravagant Star 480. Is it me? 550 extra 2, 650. Baldino, $10. DK, $10. Yeah. Papillion Club, $13. And <laughs> And uh, Hennessy Lad, fifteen dollars. Wow, Kieran Ma looks like he's just all over this Mooney Valley meeting, and we're probably Walt's going to talk him into uh, form. He may just well train the lot, but not if Nico has anything to say with it, because he liked the replay last start of "Is It Me" in the purple with the yellow cap. This all's flying, Nico. Yeah, he is. Uh, Chase Jungle Me, uh, Jungle Jim on this occasion. Uh, Mas Montaro has won out of the race since he was third. Fourth, Shovovers won twice. Uh, Ebony King was fifth. It, it ran on, um, probably should have won a few races up in Sydney. And then Forbidden City had run well out of this as well in stakes grade. So it was a hot race. Um, and I thought he was probably did a really good job to chase Jungle Jim here, who had a few things in his favor. He's a tough on speed horse. He just missed him late. That was going back to the 13th of January. I'd be really keen on this horse if he had to jump out somewhere, but just going to back in Dan Bowman. He's a good trainer. Um, this is probably his real banner horse at the moment and the horse on the up. So imagine he wouldn't be sending him to the races if he's not right. I like Mick D going aboard, gets a good run just in behind the speed here. And just off what he showed last campaign, I think he's just coming of age, this horse. He ran some really big figures early in his career and looked like he'd really go on with it. And then, um, yeah, this campaign, he's come back and he ran second at Skybird. Then he had a, a couple of unlucky runs that form around Ballet stacked up. Obviously, the form around his, his last run at Flemington. Um, so, yeah, I thought this was a, a race where he could just get a few favours from an inside draw and there's not much to beat here um, with Extravagant Star and Extra 2. I think this is about their level. The horse that's the real question mark's Grand Impact. He's first up off uh, a fair break. Looking at punning form here, what is it, 511 days he'll be on Saturday. So obviously he's a talented horse. The last time we saw him was in the Coolmore behind in secret and he won a group race prior to that. Um, he's jumped out well enough. I thought his most recent jump out, he probably could have hit the line a little better and been a bit stronger late. But it's obviously a horse with talent, but the bar plates do oh, go on bar for the plates. first time. Yeah, the bar plates. I saw those, Nick. Oh, that's... Mm. Never, never. You don't want to. Not ideal, is it? I mean, it might be no. one of the reasons I had the long break. You didn't happen to catch his bit of work around the valley on Monday or Tuesday, did you? I haven't seen. But it. The, he, he went around in the blinkers and he didn't get round. Oh, he go, there, I'll send you the. But he crabbed around the joint like crab. Malum's trying to steer him up the straight. His head's everywhere. <laughs> I know he didn't have the shades on, but I, I didn't see the point of taking him there and not putting the sh shades on. He just you wouldn't you wouldn't back him with a, you know, with stolen money on what you saw there. But he probably different horse in the blinkers because so, he was all his trials are in the blinkers. But um, I have a couple of a couple of queries in on there, and that's that's why yeah, I, uh, is it me was um, I was standing like a broken record here, Nico, but I went um, with the queries on the favourite. I, I thought is it me as well, going to get the favours and MDs to go to jock in the meeting with the riding ranks depleted, low draw, got to get around the valley first time, but the low draw helps certainly helps that. Um, yeah, so is it me as well, Scoot? I definitely uh, classify him as about at five fifty. Uh, I'm keen to I'm keen to play as well. I want to back him. I only know Extravagant Star and know it pretty well. Well, it's, it's still accepted, good. isn't it? Walled up with you. It might be. It's not much good wherever it goes. It's very plain. I think I think Nico said uh, yeah, he's found his levels kind of horse, I think. 
And Scott Gate 3 up in Sydney, I think Gate 9 down here, so you'd think it might go to Sydney. Well, is, it, well, is it me got around Penthurst, Penthurst so you'd Dude. think he'd get around the valley? <laughs> it's, it's a bloody tight little track, so hopefully he's, he's had a bit of exposure to those Western District tracks at, at the jump out, so um, yeah. hopefully he's taken a bit out of that and just can scoot around the valley, camping behind the speed, and Mickey D just lets MD's him rip. Right, right job Bang. for that. I just hope Nick uh, Scooty puts the wrong numbers in the email and puts like race four and racing. Is it me into I am me into the wrong race numbers or something just to confuse the shit out of everyone? <laughs> I am me, is it me? Not Unbelievable. Sure. Well, yeah, regardless of the extravagant star, if it's in the race or out of the race, I think this, this horse will nearly go off favourite. Is it me? I think we'll get absolutely smashed in betting. I'll be betting. Yeah, it was, the bar plate's 511 days. It's got to be out the gate, hasn't it? Jesus. Yeah. Outstanding, Nico. We might have to uh, send that one before the price disappears for the Little Birdie Syndicate. That'll be uh, a great way to play. Nico will be out there. He'll be uh, braving the elements, but enjoying the mounting yard, the nice up close, in per like you know, in person. Can touch the horse, nearly feel it, smell it, and uh, smell the uh, fresh manure on the ground. So, going to be great out at uh, the valley. And I'm tipping uh, the food. The food's a little bit better too out there, isn't it, Nico? The valley food. Oh, it's better than playing through the nose at bloody Flemington. They've, it's a bit toffee at Flemington. It's hard to get decent feed. You've got food trucks. Valley got more, Kransky there last time I was collar. there, and I regretted it about <laughs> 15 minutes later. Yeah, you strike me as a Kransky man. Yeah, the, Kran- the Kranskys are gone. There's no more are they Kranskys. gone, have they? I remember going and getting a Kransky when I was younger when we went to the Valley and probably had a horse that went around around last, so that was probably the highlight of the night for me. It was, it was Lansky's Kransky. That's what it used to be. Segment on uh, Get On, wasn't it? Oh, God. Anyway, story for another day. Rose Hill, uh, big. Uh, it's not. I think it's two mil forecast between now and then. And the million dollar question is, what uh, lanes are going to be in play and how wet's it going to be? But uh, Uncle Chris says it's uh, soft five is where we're going to start. So treacherous uh, for anyone, and he probably need to see how the uh, the track's playing for the first couple of races before you absolutely uh, launch into anything. But um, hopefully, can uh, shine some light on a couple of big uh, chances here and some best bets. So Rose Hill Race Six is the first one. We're going to have a look at great race here, the Rose Hill Guineas, over 2,000 metres, Riff Rock at 3.10, Tom Kitten, 3.20, Immediacy, $7, King Colorado, 9.50, Ganbare, 9.50, Cafe Millennium, $12, CL Wolf is 13, Cap Ferrar, 16, Decast, 34, and much better outside the market here. Uh, Gambare and uh, the Ramwick Guineas is the replay that we're going to have a look at here. 9.50, Jesus. So they've gone pretty quick here, and, and Gambari did have to work to lead. The, the difference is there was sort of three, four gay waterhouse horses in this race, and Fukubana um, decided he was going to have a mental breakdown early and try and break the sound barrier. So uh, watch here from here on. So Tom Kitten sort of three from the outside in the Godolphin, and Gambari sort of looks like he's dropping off. And I just love when Tim gets stuck into him this last 100 here and through the line. He looks like he's sort of coming back and... And strong as anything, which offers fast tempo, uh, you know, leading into this race, obviously, up into 2,000 metres. That's what you're trying to find, the horse that's going to sort of relish that extra 400 metres. And out of that race, I, um, you know, at the price-wise, I thought he was the one that was uh, maybe looking for it and gets the better switch here, the old Mark Lamborn. We're dropping names here, golden switch. You know, the, uh, yeah. goes from a faster uh, on outside leader to probably controlling from in front here. Are you showing other replays or that's it? No, I thought that was the only one. That's, yeah, we could that's just cool. We could show a lot of them. Um, what about, oh, can you make a case for C.O. Wolf and, and the big the big Giraffe Cafe can. Millennium as well? The eyes are well, I can't for it. I think it's a 1,200-meter hall. I don't know what the hell it's done. And it's, it, Who? It, it, Cafe Millennium, what he's done, he's two runs <laughs> this time in off the long break, so I think he's still got breathing issues and whatever. I don't think he's a 2,000-meter horse, but he's the one who sort of grays up all that form too. And... Uh, and then you've got to add in the Riff Rocket, uh, King Colorado. Uh, I don't really like that form at all, uh, the, the Riff Rocket side of things. So the way I'm thinking, Sydney-wise, and Gambari was sort of 25 to 1 earlier in the week. He was $13 when I looked this morning and nine fifty. So he's they're, they're finding him, but he was the better angle from the Sydney racing. And then you've got to throw in immediacy, which I'll be interested to hear from the boys. Fourth run, first prep. Looks like he just improved out of sight the other day. I know he got a speed to suit and maybe he's a little bit flattered uh, visually that the sectionals weren't super strong, but I think they ran fast time and he's the one who adds um, a, a big dim- uh, dimension to this race. But uh, yeah, you, you mentioned Seo Wolf. I think he could sit forward outside of Gambari and they were the two value out of that race, I agree. And then um, Melbourne-wise, I, I'm probably casting that um, Guinea's form and, and probably looking at immediacy as the 
as the horse I'm most scared of in the race. Righto, boys, immediacy. Can it measure up here? DK's camp, Bazustin. It's a good horse. <laughs> I took it on. I took it on with uh, the other good horse, Caracas, or something last time. But um, the maps panned out. The tempo was put on for the race. But he knows he's a nice horse. He keeps, even though he's still learning his craft, he keeps reducing. Yeah, th- those blinkers seem to really just do the trick with him, don't they? Just put on last start and he went gun barrel straight. So, yeah, I think he's he's shown a fair bit throughout. It's like he couldn't do anything more. Like he's no. got a fast tempo, slow tempos. He's been quickest home in all of his races. Um, and I, I think looking at him from a type two, I reckon he'd be suited on a wet track. So that's a, a tick for him as well. Um, Cap for I was doing his best work late in the Australian Guineas and Josh Parr got off and said he's right on track for the 2000. You'd think he has to be yeah. in play off the spring it, champion. It's 20 run. to 1 or something in this and I agree. It wasn't yeah. Josh's best rider. Well, you know, a bit of bad luck, but stop, start, inside, outside. So Ryan Moore. Hmm? Yeah, Ryan Moore. I reckon yeah, he, it, it we looks expect it last start at 50s. 2000 certainly going to suit suit it. I, I think it is a race to go looking wide. I'm uh, going to have something on Cosmic Lad. I thought he was... Oh, here we go. He was just too far. That's the one far. I got nearly barred from the show for tipping in last start at 100. It was just yeah. too far back. Second fastest for the two of the race, and when they really sprinted that last 200, he was just left a bit flat-footed. So out Edward. to 2,000, he, he looks like the one that's really suited out of that lead-up. He probably can't win, but I think he'll run a good race at 80s. You wish you drew a gate, don't you? Like, mm. I know I'll have uh, Ed will be on the phone in the next 24 hours sort of talking about where the hell it could possibly end up and I, I don't really know. And and he was a little – like Chad can be a bit sleepy on him if he drops right out, which could be a problem. But, yeah, he's a – mate. You, I, you could definitely argue in 12 months' time it's the horse you'd want to you own out of all of these. Mm. And it could be could be 48 hours' time. It might be the one you want to own. I, I don't disagree. Yeah, I think I'm gonna. I, I just, I think nearly my bet fair lay of the week will be um, Tom Kitten. I think he three dollars. I think it was two fifty. The bookies are trying to bet or trying to make people take early in the week. He's already at three twenty. I've just, I've, wa- I've watched that replay many times, and I just can't see how uh, he can beat some of these other horses. He looks like uh, Riff, I'd rather lay Riff Rocket over him, but uh, I see where you're coming him. from, just from a price perspective. But is it, he's another example of what we were talking about. Uh, Tom Kitten two eighty with Militarise in the race. Militarise is out of the race. <laughs> And he's now 320 and he's drawn two and he looks like he's going to follow the leader in the most perfect position in the world you could have. So what the heck are these early markets? They're really they're really misleading at the moment. Mm. Fasc- fascinating race and, uh, yeah, lots of different angles with that one. So interesting to see how the uh, track's playing. Market only for race seven, George Wright, I think about it, 390, militarised. Is it out or in or are we still waiting to hear? Still waiting. Yep. Another okay. blood test or something. White, high white blood to get, yeah, you think 17 gate, it wouldn't want to be a long way out for them to pull him out of the race, I wouldn't imagine. Mm. Militarise, $4.80, end cap, eight fifty. Lady Laguna, $9, V8, 10 New Energy, 16 import, uh, Kovalika, 17 Amenable, $17, Pericles, 19 Mighty Ulysses, 21 Tis Invincible, 26 Unspoken, 34 Cosmic Vega, 34 Lock Eagle, Navo Peak, Cepheus. It's got a, a bit of a tail to it this race. Query over the favourite and the barrier will sort of just thrown the um, cat amongst the pigeons, so to speak. It'd probably rather it can win from that gate, but if you're betting in the race, I don't think it's a race you're going to go balls deep in anything here unless um, I'm missing something. But I'd probably rather it go around uh, from a betting perspective. I, I'm going to go Team Nico here, the old Blue Jackets. I, I, sucked, yeah, I got sucked into the last start Pericles and he just sort of got stuck in the wrong spot at the wrong time. He was, I think, third up, back in trip slightly there and... That was the Lady Laguna race uh, out to 1500 wider draw. I think he can cruise forward here, and there's not a lot of not a lot of speed at all. I thought he'd get across pretty easy and just be in a really good spot. And I was just surprised he was nineteen dollars. I, I couldn't really work that out, uh, especially if all that three year old form's a little bit smelly. So Militarised V8, end cap, they all come in fairly well set up. I was surprised Militarised didn't go to the Rose Hill Guineas. I, I was pretty shocked. I thought he was looking for two thousand, not to come back in trip. Obviously, Uncle Chris has got the Doncaster on his mind. Um, but, yeah, I, I thought Pericles was a pretty solid solid betting option, to be fair. Another sort of each way decent bet. Um, Lady Laguna 1500 has got to be a huge query for mine. Miller tries to set back in distance. V8's off that little gap. And, uh, yeah, I'm not sure, sure of the strength of that form. And end cap, I mean, we know him pretty well. He's just a bit of a battler, isn't he? So I think if Pericles is going to win a race like this, this is a good setup for him. Mm, boys down in Melbourne. 
I would have loved if it was probably a handicap, but I think Amenable will run well. Zara on, just had a few things against him first up, working into that breeze, um, and he was just probably found wanting a bit late. 1,500, soft draw, bit of sting out of the truck. I think he'll probably overachieve here. And he went better than it looked, didn't it? Like he thought he looked disappointing, like he got full control of that uh, Von Hawk, ran him down, but I think they went a lot better than everyone probably gives him credit for. He's drawn perfect. He's drawn like four or something, isn't he? He's going to get a soft time. Up yeah, the, the, like the race rated really well. Um, he was quite good in a few soft track runs as a three-year-old and he's just going to have a perfect map here, you know, in a race where, think about it, could be cast, Pericles is wide, Kovalika will be out the back. Like a few of these horses just could have, you know, terrible runs and he just could be there. Zara seems to get a lot out of him. So I'm, I'm sort of thinking he might be the big overachiever. Same line of thinking. Yeah, I sort of, I sort of had a half a chubby for Kovalika, and I thought this is the horse that Waller wanted to target for the race. But um, I'm going to have to back up on uh, old old Uncle Gaz, poor Telly, for the second week in a row. Didn't, cap. Didn't quite get the chocolates with uh, Kamochi, but uh, I thought she ran super, and I think the stable's in pretty good form, and that's sort of coming out of that uh, that three year old form. The stable's so. in good form. Well, his two good horses are in good form. Oh, they're form. going all right. Yeah, they're in form. The others are one from 140, <laughs> but that's all right. That'll do. The new look, Gary Portelli. So I thought NCAP B Shin is an absolute cracker for this horse. Barra 2 will get every favour, 850. I didn't I didn't actually I, remember that Shin again, begin again was on this one. Yeah. Interesting. And I, I was a bit like Walt. I thought, and I think I said it on last week's show or a couple of weeks ago, to my eye, militarised probably wants 2,000 metres or I'd rather him over in the Rose Hill Guineas. I'd, I'd be all over him in that race, but... um. Definitely end cap, I thought, was up to these. Kovalik is 20s. Mm. Cheapest. Yeah, big big price. Mm. Anyway, so that's that uh, That's that race. Uh, DK, any thoughts? No, I think. No, no, no. I'm, no, no, no I'll, uh, I'll salmon trout that race for me. Like <laughs> Beautiful. The Golden Slipper is the next one that we're going to have a look at. Storm Boy uh, got a stranglehold over the marketplace here. 210 out to 225 Switzerland for 60. Lady of Camelot's been the mover 11 into 7. Straight Charge 10. Hayasugi 17 into 16. Espionage. Uh, some query to get a start. I think uh, what militarized was an emergency last year and had no luck in the slipper. Twenty dollars might get a run. Fully lit. Twenty six dollars. Shanghai Express. Twenty six. Traffic Warden. Thirty four. Thirty one. And then it's big odds for Bodyguard. Coleman. Prost. Manal. Doubling down. Got a very very long tail. This one. If you think uh, Storm Boys no value, let's have a look at some of the replays and. Uh, Walt is uh, fresh off a pretty comprehensive preview early in the week, hmm. I would have thought. But uh, Storm Boy, more so the way he's done it, looks pretty effortlessly to my eye. More more under the bonnet here, and there's Prost running into second. Yeah, Prost probably had the the no luck in the run, had had more excuses, and I thought he did a good job. It's yeah, it's it's I don't know, I don't know. It, you, there's so many ways to look at this horse deep into first prep, blah blah. Obviously, not easy to do. Is he looking for further? I could argue for sure. Uh, he got full control there and he certainly got, they all ran cover for him. If you sort of look, they, they were looking for him when he jumped out and he was a little bit slow and they let him come through and, and and do his thing. They won't be doing that Saturday, apart from the fact that, you know, five of the first seven in, in betting are all from the same stable. So, uh, yeah, it'd be interesting to see where the big fella ends up. <laughs> That's, that does put a, a funny spin on the race, doesn't it? Uh, let's have a look at uh, the Blue Diamond because there's a lot of Blue Diamond horses uh Coming so through this race, Lady this is Camelot. a real race, right? And this is this is sort of the angle I'm taking. This is the only real race that any of these horses have really been in. Uh, maybe the Todman a little bit, but Lady of Camelot worked her ass off. Uh, the rabbit out the front there, spy wire sort of folds up, doesn't take her anywhere. She never gets on a right leg, and I think the two fillies out of this are both super chances here. Obviously, High Sugi's probably going to face a monster task from the draw and around Rose Hill, but uh, you know I think Rose Hill and and Caulfield profile pretty similarly as uh, as racetracks, but she'll probably need them to overdo it up front. But I think that form is, you know, real form. And even though Dublin Down came out won a pretty average race last week, it's still measuring up, isn't it? It's still showing that beating a fair way in that race is is solid enough. Form traffic warden as well. Yeah, it, um, it's 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 funny. They're the only two we're looking at. Yeah, oh, well, yeah, and then we'll we'll have a look at the straight charge replay as yep. well. Yeah, I was a bit shocked. I looked at the market and Nisa was 100 to 1 with D Lane. Not many chance, times yeah, you, you can say. They've got to go around winners, haven't they? Oh, they have to make horses. it a winner. Anyway, straight charge. This race here, like she, it's missed the kick, knuckled at the start, then really had to work hard. 100 to 1 shot came around. Nash had a, I don't know what, had a seizure at the start on uh, on espionage and kind of buggered up the whole race. 
and uh, Switzerland sort of was left to, to pick up the pieces. He, he's not like improved, improved, improved significantly every start, but he's certainly held his form. You know, this is talking about the winner, Switzerland. You know, I'm personally probably going to take a little set against him, but the problem is he's going to get every chance here. He's drawn perfectly to sort of camp on the Waterhouse horse and, and get his chance, but I just think he's the one with the least upside that's had, you know, PR first start, perfect run first start, perfect run third start, second start, you know, he had to do a little bit of work outside the leader and, and beat Shangri-La, but um, it's uh, it's quite a different race here. And, uh, you know, I, I think for mine, straight charge is the horse to, to take out of that race is the horse that uh, will be primed here, second preparation, season faster out of the gates, going to take up a position. And if the Waterhouse horses, I think, do the old flying V like the Mighty Ducks here and, and really do go out with a game plan and it goes to that game plan, straight charge will be the one that will be out in front controlling. Um, Storm Boy's the big if. I don't know. I just think they don't want it to be back behind fully lit. You know, I think they want it to be off the fence. And if it's on the fence, it'll be behind straight charge, not fully lit. That's what I would think they'll be trying to do. And I don't mind Prost uh, as a... The horse that chased home Storm Boy there last start with things against, if he gets outside the leader here, I think he can run a, a huge race. So is, does, what's the go with Hippo riding it and then Hippo not riding Lady Camelot? Is it the weight? Or uh, did he no. choose Prost? Uh, the, 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 what's happened? The, 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 tr- the owner's a bit of a funny cat, and I don't know what happened between there and there, but I think, I think Hippo number one had sort of committed to Prost to a certain degree, and uh, number two... Uh, I think he's a big shin man, and obviously they got shin to come up and trial him. So yeah, I think it was the deal was done pretty early. Mm-hmm. I don't know why, uh, you know. And, and he's obviously a bit of a funny cat, as I said. Like Tim, Tim, who or the stable or whatever you want to say, made the decision to ride, stay in town to ride uh, straight charge that day, and, and Hippo went and rode Lady of Camelot. And Tim's hasn't been on one of that fella's horses since, you know. So it's obviously he's a little bit. He has a lot to do with the selection of riders, so I'd say he's chosen Shin, but I couldn't think of a better rider for this horse, Lady of Camelot. I've got it marked very close to favourite. Um, st- straight charge, shorter embedding, Storm Boy, you know, close to them. They're sort of the three favourites, and then, you know, I've got Switzerland double figures and Prost is the horse that's... Um, what price have you got, Hayasugi? Yeah, I, well, I have to mark it sort of mid-teens, but I, I can't have it go around a loser just because if it, it's the horse that's going to be super strong and... Mm got the same form line as the horse I'm marking close yeah, to favourite. Well, I'm just concerned that yeah. where it's going to get to and the task it's going to face. And I'm hoping that Shin's superpower for mine is that he can get horses to travel near their top without pressuring them. And that's, if you watch the way Tim rode, I don't think he did anything wrong on her, on Lady of Camelot, but she wouldn't change leg and the way he sort of rides is different to Shin and he gets them near the top and then they sort of just seem to glide onto their right leg and accelerate. And that's exactly what he did with her in a trial. And if he can replicate that here... Perfect draw to have options. Do whatever he wants. You know, I think um, I think the betting's finding her now. But uh, twelve, thirteen bucks. I was just going to keep betting till my nose bled. But seven dollars will probably slow me down a little bit. Hmm. But yeah, I'm, I'm team Waterhouse. That's for sure. And, and, and yeah, <laughs> like I'm on. I'm on like full disclosure. Storm boy, very small early, but it'll definitely go around a loser. And if, if Switzerland. Um, if Switzerland uh, wins, I'll be I'll be down uh, mopping DK's floors and shining his shoes for the next six months. Nico or DK, have you seen anything you like here or shine any light? Yeah, I'm Storm Boy. I think a, f- a fast run race will suit him. Um, I think that's probably why he didn't look as good last start. I think that that's where he comes into his best, like we saw in the Magic Millions and. If he is looking for further, then a faster run race is just going to suit him even better. He's a massive horse. You can probably just bully his way out of an inside draw anyway and sort of bumps up now the way if he needs to keep going. Look, he'd probably rather J-Mac than Ryan Moore, but he can get the job done and he'll probably ride him to his strengths. He'll probably know that about the horse. Got it done last year inside, didn't he? Yeah, I think he's just like like a once in a generation kind of cult that can probably do all three can probably win this the size produce and the champagne and i think that's that way that's maybe where we see the best of him that he's next two runs but yeah like if if this if the blue diamond form is the next piece of form then i think he's he's probably got them covered i think that's that's my read on the race Mm. i did hear a funny one that um it's only a rumor not confirmed that they sort of asked Ryan Moore, you know, like, uh, what what do you think uh, you've had a look and what do you think you'll want to do with Storm Boy? He said, oh, I haven't watched his tapes yet, but I'll, I'll get around to it. 
No, he's taking the piss, isn't he? <laughs> I don't know. Hey? You wouldn't be surprised, would you? But it, I thought it was funny. It's just, uh, you know, trying to feel him out to see where he might want to. Because, uh, yeah, ideally, like, if it pings, you would think that uh, plan A will be just let him run. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So strong. Yeah. Like, I can't remember seeing too many two-year-olds that are that strong. Like, he is. I've never m- seen one that can run. Old, yeah, I've never seen one with his physique that, that's actually fast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. One that can actually go. There's a few probably yeah. sitting in a paddock somewhere that can't get to the races because they've got all these issues. But, yeah, he just looks like a freak, I reckon. Mm. Yeah. the yeah, I, I can't add any more. I think you guys are uh, all over it and I agree with most of your comments. I will just have a mental health bet on Anisa. I thought she went super off a, a terrible sort of setup and... D Lane, Peter Moody. I just got too much respect for Stable and Ryder. And I think that Philly's got a little bit of ability. And I just don't think she looked comfortable at all. Like I thought she's still a bit new to it all, but there's there's definitely something about that Philly that says to me that she shouldn't be a hundred to one. Like yeah, well, it's, it's great to see because like you're saying, like it's not a race that's got too many it? Pelicans in it. Like there's Coleman's probably the one horse that should be definitely in a paddock and it'll probably come out and win now that I've said that. But <laughs> and, and it's got upside well, next prep too, right? Yeah. It actually ran quite well the other day, but just looks like it's, you know, uh, just needs a break. But you would say, like, you, you, I couldn't put a pen through any of these horses that they won't improve and come back as, as good three-year-olds. And that's the most exciting thing, um, you know, not just this race being a great race, but that they don't look like they're squibby two-year-olds. They all look like they've got... Uh, yeah, great upside. Mm, ma- massive race. Probably, yeah, definitely uh, the race of the season so far. It uh, It's a mouth-watering contest. Can't wait to see it. Rose Hill Race 9 is the next one market only here. Uh, the Galaxy $4.60 Osmosis. Uh, Aft Cabin $5.50. Sunshine in Paris $6. Private Eye $8. Uncommon James 9 Tall Passive Aggressive. King's Gambit 12 King of Sparta 16 And then you got as four nineteen dollars Marzu. Bonus Notches is 20 to 1. So, and horses like Remarks, Apateo. Front page, they're all at the twenty dollar mark, and then uh, that just shows you the depth and quality of this race. Absolute corker, always has, always will be a great race. The Galaxy, um, free bet time. Who are you backing here? Well, uh, an interesting race and very similar to last week. The more victorious. So you've got front pages. There's not a lot of dominant speed here. There's a few horses that want to race up near the speed, but really, front page is probably the only horse that wants the front. And that should drag Schumacher across with um, with Osmosis, and you just hope that she can hold him because um, that's the problem with her riding these sorts of horses. You just never know what she's going to do early, and then the knock on effect it has, you know, in the second half of the race. But if she sort of comes out relatively neutral, and front page who is a bit of a dominant horse, and and Sheila the Thriller gets it running from that outside draw, and she just pops like lands behind it, that could be game over. That could be absolutely game over because I think he's a very high level colt. It's just that first two, three hundred meters. If things go his way and he gets across the ones inside him, which I think he should do, and lands behind this horse, uh, you know, it could be game over. That's one angle, and then trying to find a different angle is nearly impossible. It, interesting. Donny was the first one who brought it up. Sunshine in Paris, who's been a, a fan, we've been a fan of him since day one. First time since 2019 that Ryan Maloney's ridden 54 kilos, and that's riding this horse half kilo over. So I'll be factoring that in a touch. Um, it's drawn the gate, and the most dangerous horse isn't like that. It's got that sharp turner's foot that it could get the gap and go bang, which is probably the that's what you're looking for. 1100 Rose Hill, very hard to circle from back and wide uh, as a rule, unless the the track's doing funny things. So if you're looking for the horse up the inside there, it's probably Aft Cabin, Sunshine in Paris that could could suck, 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 go bang. And uh, the obvious one for me and not hard to find is Osmosis that should be in an ideal spot. I just if it had like a, your black shin on it, I'd be nearly declaring it. Mm, Ryan Maloney, I, I played off with someone the other day and they reckon that 56 is a like, absolute stretch for him. So God knows how he's going to get 53 and a half or 54 and 54, a half. 54, yeah. Which is interesting, but at least I've got – Craig Williams on the sidelines up there and he hasn't got a ride in the race. So if he can't make the weight, old uh, Willow might get the call up there, which it, yeah, it's one of the most unusual um, jockey commitments that I've sort of seen there. And uh, boys down down in Melbourne, you got a horn for anything in this one? No, I haven't really got around to it yet. looks like a, a bit of a raffle, typical handicap. So I, was, I sort of thought Private Eye would go a bit shorter than what he has, but th- I think he's not even a guarantee to run either at the moment. So that could uh, change the the dynamic of the race as well. 
Mm. Yeah, betting wise is going to be really interesting because they could some. It's going to be one of those days where horses just are too big a price to let go round, and you can get so it's just it's which is good but bad, isn't it? It's a it's a great day's betting. Mm. Yeah, if the real osmosis, uh, if he's taken the next step, yeah, he looks pretty well in there at fifty three kilos and four dollars sixty. I think is a reasonable price. I, I could, I could see him starting a little bit shorter than that. And I'd take six to four if that if it unfolds the way you you hope it does that first two hundred meters, and then probably five dollars is his right price if if it doesn't. So I think you know I think it's probably it's entitled to start favourite just with the setup of the race. Yeah, right, tend to agree there. All right, that's uh, a good look at uh, four of the big races there at Rose Hill. So it's going to be a cracking uh, day's betting there, but a big asterisk around the uh, the track watch there. So speaking of watching, racingwatch.com.au is where you can find more of John's stuff. So he's doing the live streams at the moment, but uh, importantly, he's, uh, he's got his website with his Discord and his Telegram service, so you can ask him a question anytime, night and day. And uh, being the vampire that he is, he only sleeps probably four hours uh, per day, so uh, <laughs> probably clocks off at about 11, and then he's back up every four, time. Four's a luxury this week, but yeah, uh, yeah well, you got to do what you got to do. Four or five a.m., he's uh, he's back at it and back into it. So uh, when I'm up and firing, he's generally with me. So uh, make sure you check out racingwatch.com.au, and the, uh, the Sydney Carnival is heating up. Saturday, we've had a, uh, a slight dusting of rain, but uh, there's going to be some sun around uh, up in Queensland. I'm looking for a hat trick here. Race three is uh, the race that I like the look of. We've got Oceans are the favourite here, $3.30. Brookhaven, $4.20. Schmoozer, $7. Bucks. Tenzing, $8. Kinetic, $9.50. Dark Harmony, $11. Penito, or Pentito, $12 here. And we're just going to show a couple of replays here. And Walt will remember one of these ones. The first one, this is uh, Redina winning uh, the Gunsig Classic up in uh, Queensland Winter Carnival last time. So it's in the Walla Green, and the horse I like here is just in the nose roll and with the uh, the white. So it's blue colours uh, with a white bit in its cap, and the horse is called Brookhaven. So sort of got uh, half sort of chopped out there early, but uh, sort of keeps finding the line here. So the class of that oh, race got a is... black nose roll coming yeah, through. Yeah, black yep, nose yep, yep. roll there. So the horse is up front. You've got Yellow Brick, uh, Soothsayer, and Redina. So... What well, Redina went out went on to win a uh, what was it Epsom? Epsom, yeah. Yeah, so that's pretty good form here. And excuse the kickback at the Gold Coast track here. This <laughs> horse is just out in no man's land here. Um you can see it with the nose roll here again, Brookhaven, and that's John Rambo, who's an absolute uh red alert sort of eye catcher there. He just absolutely savages line. So he's gonna be something beat. But uh this horse here, Brookhaven, sort of gets squeezed out again late. It, it was first up against a lot of horses that were in white hot form here and had way uh, way more runs under the belt here. So first up, I thought that was a definite pass mark on a track that was uh, pretty skew if that kickback was terrible. And I think it, uh, it looks like a really dangerous horse here. The big, uh, <laughs> the big asterisk here and sucker for punishment. Didn't learn my lesson uh, well enough with uh, D Thornton last week, but uh, I think that's our biggest barrier to uh, to victory here. It sits midfield, got Barry Seven, and Damien Thornton uh, is on board. I thought Dangerous Oceans are uh, back from um, 1,600 metres. I thought she was just, just well found there at the $3.30, back to 1,400 here, and I thought off the freshen, Pentito at 12 bucks was the saver. So I think there's um, – Enough speed up front for this horse to work into the race. Uh, 1600, I'd be absolutely horned up for this horse, Brookhaven, but uh, I think this is the race we sort of, we sort of catch it. Um, uh, are Boris and, and Damien related? Yeah. yeah. And then Steph. By what? Steph's, Ability or? Steph's married to Benny Thompson. So they're what brothers? Brothers or? They're all, they're all, yeah. Siblings. Brothers, Boris and Damien? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Damien's better than Boris. I'll give you that. A lot better. Mm. <clears throat> so um, two bet strategy here is Brookhaven. So five bucks in a four twenty at top sport, and then uh, the little, tiny little saver if you want to go that way is um, Pen Tito, who brings a pretty good form and has had that 40, uh, 40 day freshen. So if they go forward with it, um, it's going to be the horse going to have to run down. But uh, I think Brookhaven can do the job. But there's just a lot of horses here that sort of look like they want 1,600, 1,800, 2,000 metres. And I think uh, it's just right time, right place. And this horse is just a class animal. You can see uh, through its form last uh, winter that uh, it's got a motor. And I think this horse will start very short again. So I think it'll be around the sort of the $3 mark. So make sure you bet early and bet with confidence and uh, play up your winnings. Next segment here is Donnie's Best, and he's due for a bit of luck, so let's see what he's got this week. G'day, ladies. Donnie's here this week's Best Bet. Uh, this week has our Eagle Farm Race 7, Bubba's Boy. This is the mare back in form. 
dominated from outside the lead last start at Doom. Then he has to take that run across the road to Eagle Farm to be super competitive. And I reckon the $3 looks uh, a nice bet, especially for an on-speed fit horse. Good luck. Jeez, that detail, that detail he's got is just, it, it, it boggles my mind every week. Hello, ladies. Was he, was he addressing you? Could have been. I don't mind that. Oh, that's a compliment for me. <laughs> this horse in white hot form, one by three lengths last start, outlawed Tajaki. Uh, a couple of uh, sneaky little dangers here, but uh, Bailey Wheeler, when he's on, he's he's very good and he's riding pretty well at the moment, I would have thought. Bailey Wheeler, come yeah, back. I, I like this horse. I'm surprised it hadn't won for quite some time, but once it does strike its sort of form, it does tend to hold it, but it's, uh, what is it, sixth up? Yeah. $2.70. I can't knock it. Donny stamp of approval. So he's due a bit of luck, uh, poor old Donny. He just keeps getting uh, bad ride after bad ride. So hopefully uh, he can get in the money. Top Sports team, two from four last week. So it was Democracy Manifest and Linderman, which was good. This week they're plowing into the best of the best again. Race eight, number five, Imperatriz. So 2,500 best of the best. So in all the group ones. So shit, I think there's about four group ones across uh, the weekend, this weekend. So plenty of opportunities. I think there's five in Sydney, so. Oh, well, there you go. It Six makes it hard to beat. Yeah, so there's, there's plenty there. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. if you can't be bothered waiting for a price, but you like a horse and hopefully they uh, get you a better price, maybe Stormboy, maybe Imperatriz after our previews, you definitely uh, should be thinking about taking best of the best at Top Sport. Rose Hill Race 4, number six, is Schwartz, 700 at 390 in the Derby Munro. Melbourne horse going to Sydney. Sydney horse, isn't it? Hey? Isn't oh, it John it, O'Shea? Oh, I don't know. I think it's John O'Shea. It did, it did win down at the Carnival. It won, it it won, won in the Carnival, the Carnival I think didn't it's John it? O'Shea. It is John O'Shea's yeah. horse. Okay, you can have it. Yeah. No, it, yeah, it's, it looks ready to go, but it is a – well, I do think Brave Mead's a funny horse. It just seems underrated. It seems to go around 9 to 2 or, or decent price if we start. It's runs – two runs back have been great. I thought I, I thought it would be favourite, but um, there is a big boom on old Schwarzenegger. But, uh, yeah, I don't know whether uh, I'll be – taking short price about it next bet here is uh this is nico uh rose this is paying for the footy trip nico race eight number one storm boy five thousand bobby so uh is that nico signing bonus hmm. he's just running straight just on bang straight on the uh the big barging three-year-old two-year-old storm boy so hopefully uh gets clear air for whoever's uh back that and this is this is walt's bet uh, Rose Hill, race eight, number 14, Lady of Camelot, 500 at uh, $10. But uh, you might have snipped some 13 or 14 or... 25 20, $25. So chipped away you? all the way, have it's you? the one I want to win. Yeah. Beautiful. All right, so there it is. So, yeah, bit of action for uh, Storm Boy and Lady Camelot through the slipper. DK, this week, where are you going to take us? Not to that tip, Cranburn, that's for sure. <laughs> the what that served up last Friday night, the absolute monorail. Couldn't win if you weren't on the rail. You know, like Beach, Beach in went for it on my thing, but Jay Maskill dead set rode the ears off the thing on the inside to kick up and beat it, and then mine, then the Griffiths to cock polish came out at the end when it just peaked, just torched it, gassed out at the 100 metre mark, weak thing it was. Like I was prepared to forgive it on the, because it didn't find the rail, but then, you know, you can give, you can, you know, there is track bias, but it was weak as piss the last 100 metres anyway. So, no, we we'll have to wear that one on the chin, but I am sticking with Beach in, sticking with Beach in tonight at Cranbourne Race 4, number. Don't know what number it is. Sell, sell secrets. Cranbourne, is it? You, you just can't pack get away from them or Cranbourne. Cranbourne. No, packing them. Packing them. Sorry, packing <laughs> them. Did I say Cranbourne? Did I packing them tonight? It's all one joint now, but two very different tracks. Um, so packing them. Yeah, sticking with Bishin. Uh, sell seat has had the two bowl rounds from gate nine, and now Bishin's just right at first up, second up, sticks third up. Now finally draws a barrier against something of Trent's that's got a few queries over it and thought for woman who just can't can't crack it for a win. Just Robbie Lane keeps spinning it around, but. This has um, had the two bowl rounds in the nice in the two nice races, and it's ready to ready to uh, elevate tonight. So, uh, Soul Cedar about five to two or something like that. I think it is. Yeah, four forty three fifty. Give it strength. Uh, race five, race five, number two, Soul Cedar, and it's got the former and Grid Girl. She got yeah. close there yesterday, didn't she, Nico? She did. She's not. She... Yep. God bless some people call me getting over the top of her late. That was a good result for uh, the MYM subs. So, but she, if she's had a settled a bit better through the middle stages, she might have been able to hold him off. But she just does a bit wrong. Beautiful. All right, Packenham race five number two. We'll get the email out early enough for that one. So Thank you, Scoot. no excuses if uh, you can't get that one out. So we'll be in the cupboard. that one. Yes, cupboard. Some good little insights. All right. That's a that's a, a bit of a wrap from us. So fingers crossed, we've uh, given you enough ammo to uh, smack your bookie to pieces this weekend. And 
fat day out at uh, Mooney Valley, Rose Hill. There's just betting galore for the next couple of days. So, so many races, so many places, and so much betting to do. So, uh, good luck, everyone, on the punt. And, um, yeah, we'll see who wins the uh, the slipper, Storm Boy or, or someone else. Good luck to Kieran Murray and the slipper. I agree. Hopefully uh, the track plays nicely and they don't put too much bloody water on it because it's an absolute nightmare for you. Anyway, good luck, and we'll see you next week.